British Hanai is a flaky flatbread that's ranked among the top five most popular Malaysian dishes. Now you might have seen how Malaysian mamats make roti canai and admire them for how they can effortlessly flip the roti in the air. I actually used to make roti canai for my business as well, but it is time consuming, I will admit it. You need to make the dough hours beforehand and then you need to flip them and cook them to order. Now there is an alternative which is to use frozen roti canai which I think a lot of my Australian audience may not necessarily realize and the reason for that is that frozen roti canai is marketed as roti paratha. Now next time you go shopping and you see any roti paratha that's made in Malaysia that is important then you know you're on the right track okay so that's what you want a uh, roti paratha made in Malaysia is actually roti canai. So what you want to do uh, once you get a hold of them is check out some of my suggestions on how to use frozen roti chanai. Have a look. Roti with dal dip. Now this is the most common way to serve roti chanai in Malaysia. The lentil dip or dal dip that I use in my restaurant use something called tor dal and a bunch of spices. It looks complicated to make uh, but it's actually very very easy and this is how you would do it. First I fry up some minced garlic in oil and then I add the spices, a combination of turmeric, mustard seeds, fenugreek and cumin. Everything else just gets added to the pot, uh, the pre-soaked or pressure cooked lentils, potatoes, water. Asfatida, which is kind of my secret ingredient to really scale up my dal, you can pick that up at your local Indian grocery store. Tamarind, curry leaves, optional mushroom seasoning, salt, tomato chunks and small green chilies. Simmer until the lentils are soft. Finish it off with some commercial fried onions or shallots and that's it. Cook up the frozen roti according to packet instructions. Clap it between the palm of your hands and then just serve it with a side of dal. Delicious! Roti curry puff. Now, this is a shortcut way to enjoy Malaysian curry puffs without having to make the pastry from scratch. First, you need to make the curry puff filling. This is a simple recipe for a vegetarian filling which you can make and keep in your fridge for up to two weeks. First, you fry up some diced potato in oil, add some garlic and some preferably Malaysian curry powder, some mushroom seasoning, optional, salt and sugar and then simmer it covered with water until the potatoes are soft. Towards the end when most of the water has been absorbed, add some commercial fried onion, mix well and then just remove it from heat and let it cool down before you use it. You want to prepare some egg wash and then cut a piece of softened roti in half, place some curried potato filling on it, wrap it and bake it in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Take it out, brush one side with egg wash and then just finish baking it for another 5 minutes and your roti chanai puffs are ready to enjoy. Roti pizza. Now, roti chanai makes a great pizza base and all you have to do, first of all, is just cook up the roti according to packet instructions and then add your favorite toppings to it. In my case, I spread the base with a spicy tomato based paste, added some smoked trout and ricotta cheese and then just finish it off with some grated cheese. It then went under the grill for 5 minutes and that's it, a quick and easy homemade pizza thanks to frozen roti chanai.
roti tuna egg roll this is a super convenient way to eat roti because you've got it wrapped up burrito style and you can just walk around and munch on it first of all you want to cook the roti according to packet instructions then remove it and set it aside and then add any canned tuna or any filling you like into the pan beat up two eggs and pour it over the tuna add seasoning and adjust it and any other garnishes as well and while the egg is still runny add the roti back into the pan make sure it sticks to the scrambled egg cook it until it sets and then flip it onto the board add some sliced chilies if you like it spicy roll it up like a burrito and then cut it in half if you like before you serve it up Roti and jam. Uh, you know, I used to sell roti chanai spread with homemade kaya at market stalls around Sydney over 20 years ago. And to this day, uh, a lot of Australians who were first introduced to roti chanai or to kaya, courtesy of eating at my market stalls, still think that's the best way to eat roti chanai. Now, of course, you don't have to use kaya, you can use any kind of jam as well. And in this particular instance, I'm actually using a Malaysian pineapple jam. So what you want to do is just cook the roti per packet instructions and then just spread the jam on it. And if you like, you can cut it into small pieces like what I used to do uh, before you serve it up. Roti rendang wrap. Now, to me, roti and rendang is a match made in heaven. I happen to have some beef rendang sitting in my fridge, so all I had to do was take it out and reheat it. Of course, you can use any kind of protein you have on hand. You can use leftover roast chicken or roast lamb to shred it. So what you want to do is cook the roti per normal, heat up the rendang separately, and then arrange it on one side of the roti and add some salad ingredients on the other side or and then any other dressing or sambal or sauces with it fold it in half or wrap it in your favorite style and enjoy so i hope these suggestions will inspire you to experiment with different ways to use roti chanai in your kitchen let me know if you have any ideas of your own on how to use frozen roti chana. I'd love to hear it and add it to my list. I'll see you next time.